All right, it's the HAWK. And last Sunday, I did something I thought I'd never do and reviewed a film with wrestlers in it. That film was River of Darkness and it was so bad that it was funny. But then afterwards, I found out that there were actually three Kurt Angle horror movies and they were all rated horribly. All three were straight to DVD movies and all three were directed by the same man, Bruce Cooler. Coiler? Gila. Moving on with Kurt Angle, the main character. What was this, their money laundering scheme that they drummed up together? Anyway, this film we'll be watching today is called Death From Above and it's from 2012. So this is a year after the last one we've watched. So they've probably learned from all their mistakes and issues in the last film and, you know, moved on and improved. Oh, it got a 2.8 on IMDb. Well, you know, the nerds in their basement aren't always right. So we've got to find out for ourselves. And this will be a good one for TNA fans because there's several TNA wrestlers in this film. Oh yeah, and Psycho Sid again too, who is also possibly involved in the money laundering scheme. There's a few fairly well-known actors coming in as the supporting cast too. I am just going to come out and do a quick disclaimer before we start this one, if you're new around here. I am not trying to discredit Kurt Angle. He's one of my favourite of all time. We like to have a little fun on this channel. The Shove It Squad aren't exactly the sensitive types. I've made several videos dedicated to Kurt Angle in TNA and I can tell you that whilst he was shooting these films, he would have been going through the worst part of his addictions his struggles, his DUI, his violent relationship with Raka Khan. So it's absolute madness that he starred in three films, even if they all sucked, and at the same time he was on top of his wrestling career. I am in awe of this man, and we call him Perk Angle as a sign of respect. You know, in my country, Europe, having a nickname means you are liked and accepted. We start out with a fat, bold monk frantically scrambling on the floor. Sorry, the film started, I forgot to say. We're not talking about Angle here, he's not fat. The monk meets up with some more monks who check he wasn't followed by anybody. He brings them some coins or symbols or something. Then he lets out a frantic scream and we cut to the credits. Wow, I can't wait to watch this based on that. Once the film starts, the first person we get to see is the good old cowboy, James Storm. He's getting told off by his boss who wants him to work on the weekend. Storm says he's got plans, but it's too bad. James Storm quits his job. Somewhere else, Perk Angle is smiling, driving his truck. He's smiling because he's seen a small reptile in the road that he's going to run over. The other guys in the car look at each other like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? Angle wants to drive his truck over some mud hills now, but the guys in the truck are scared. Angle <laughs> lets out his perk scream. Yeah, and drives the truck anyway. What a dick this guy is. Angle deservedly crashes his truck and wakes up the next day. Everyone is seemingly okay, barring cuts and scratches. His truck is stuck on a hedge though. Angle hears a bee buzzing and starts staring at, I don't know, a root on the floor. Turns out it's not a root though and he uncovers a trap door. He reaches inside and finds a wooden necklace. As usual, he looks completely confused about this. I guess he thinks it's one of his gold medals. He also finds a picture which makes him start shaking like he's got problems. Then he chokes and passes out. For the second time in two minutes of this film, he awakens to find that his two friends are only just getting out of the truck. What were they doing for all that time? They ask Angle what he's staring at. Angle says probably nothing before stabbing and killing them like a fatality from Mortal Kombat. Where did he even get those two knives from? Elsewhere, Matt Boring is leaning against the truck and boasting that it's his brand new truck. James Storm and Morgan go for a test drive. Storm moans to Morgan about his job, who tells him screw the job. They're pulled over by a sheriff. I guess he's their rival because Matt Boring says they screw him every single day. The sheriff gives James Storm the speeding ticket, but then he talks his way out of it. Morgan is a hothead and Storm is a kiss ass. This is going to be a great double act right here. They drive off with Storm promising not to cause any more trouble. At the murder scene, the forensic team are trying to figure out what happened. One of the guys uncovers the trap door where the picture made Angle choke is still laying. It's some kind of scripture. One of them jokes that he can't read Chinese. We jump now to a black car with a number plate that says, eat my shit. The guy throws open the door and it makes the most over the top banging noise. All the locals stare at him. It is Psycho Sid. He goes into the pub and asks for some booze while somehow not even moving his head. He stares at the barman who walks off dumping in his nappy of fear. Well, at least Sid has lines, unlike the last film we watched. James Storm and his fat friend arrive at the bar. They are concerned that the black car has been parked in a disabled space. 
It's a really long, boring conversation about working in a steel mill. James Storm's dad blames immigrants. The cowboy notices Psycho Sid at the end of the bar and says he recognises him. This was never mentioned again. Maybe he saw him in just about every wrestling company there was in the US back in the 90s. Nothing is resolved and we jump to Storm with more of his friends. They drive trucks around whilst the funniest song I've ever heard plays. Use it as a spit the opening line of the song is we drive big trucks and pull into the Starbucks. The rest of the song keeps saying everyone wants to be a redneck whilst the montage of truck plays rages. <laughs> this was one of the best and worst things I've ever seen at the same time. Rumour has it, this song was almost made the cut to be James Storm's new entrance music. The scene randomly changes to where James Storm and Matt Boring are having a conversation with two girls about how much they love America. Matt Boring wants to initiate the two girls into the sacred lost pit. What? Boring reveals that James Storm is an ancestor of some druids who used to walk these parts. What the hell, now Morgan is standing up and asking who's going to be the first one to join him in the sacred pit. He picks a girl up and throws her into a mud pool. <laughs> and they proceed to have a cat fight in the mud whilst hillbilly music plays. They start stripping and it ends. Just fantastic. The last few minutes I've just been watching in complete shock and awe. Do people like this really exist in the world? The Hawk is definitely a country boy, but this sort of thing just doesn't go down in the bay. Perk Angle is walking around looking menacingly into the camera. Rhino is here wearing a dog collar for some reason. Him and his big bodybuilder mate get into a fight with Angle because Kurt wants to take Rhino's bike away. Rhino calls him a bitch. I can't believe we're actually seeing people fight. These sort of scenes have been desperately missing in this trio of movies so far. Rhino ends up smacking him one with a stick which knocks Perk down. Both the guys stare at him like dumbasses and Rhino asks if he's dead in the most monotone of voices. They turn around to go get on with their day when Ankle rises up like the freaking Terminator. He has red eyes. He says, now, about that ride and cuts both their heads off. He says, now who's the bitch as he drives away on their stolen bike. Well, at least he has lines that make you pay attention. Jamie's delivering them in a completely emotionless way. Anyway, I think that might be the point in his character. He steals the Harley and rides off. He is the Perkinator. A jarring cut back to the garage now where Rhino and the other guy were murdered. The police are still confused about what's happened to them. The cop notices that Psycho Sid in his black car is watching. He glares at the police and drives off, but they don't think this is suspicious enough to stop him. James Storm has a lot of friends. Too many, in fact. They can't flesh out a couple of friends and characters. I just want to know who we're dealing with here. I've no idea who any of these people are. The sheriff who pulled James Storm over at the start of the film asked them why they're acting shifty. The guy in the middle looks like a poor man's Negan from The Walking Dead. Why are they lined up in such a formal way whilst they talk to the sheriff? He interrogates them for ages about if the cars in the garage are stolen. You'd think he had better things to be doing, like trying to help with all the murders that have been going on in their village. He threatens the three friends to behave and then leaves. No idea what the point in that scene was. We get our next wrestler appearance now. It's one dirty bitch, ODB. She's working at a late night shop. She literally plays the same character as her TNA character, even down to yelling BAM as she jiggles her jugs. The guy she was serving leaves and then ODB starts to hear a snoring noise. And it's not me watching this film, believe it or not. ODB walks through the shop with a brush when she finds a guy who's literally pleasuring himself to magazines. <laughs> Why? The guy who was just in the shop earlier climbs into the cabin of his truck where the Perkinator is sitting. How does he not notice that someone else is sat in there with him? He eventually does and Perk simply says boo, which throws the guy out the door with fear. The lorry driver can't find Kurt when he gets up, he seemingly disappeared. Then Perk reappears and hits him with a stick and he's dead now too. Wait, no he's not, instead his lorry's now beeping at him which wakes him up. As he gets to his feet, Perk slowly chases him down in the lorry and eventually runs him over and kills him. Why didn't you just kill him the first time? James Storm is having dreams about things from the past when he wakes up with a comical scream. He has the same Olympic medal as Perk Angle. The police have now found the trucker's body. Great line here, the sheriff says, it looks like it's the end of the road for this guy. I actually quite like the interactions between these investigators. They have some good lines and delivery. But who are they? I literally don't know their names. I've seen them four times already. One of the guys says, there's just something evil about all of this. Well, no shit. Nobody kills five people out of the goodness of their hearts. The Perkinator pulls up at a dance hall now. This is such jarring music compared to the rest of the film, which had slow country music. Perk appears in the crowd looking annoyed. He's now at the front of the crowd looking a bit out of place. He heads to the back of the arena where some fat man is promising to introduce the groupies to the band. Perk appears in the shadow saying, why don't you take a picture? What? He only appeared for half a second. That isn't the correct context of how to use that line. It's supposed to be used when someone stares at someone for a lengthy period. Anyway, Kurt is here because he wants the fat man's Olympic medal rune. It seems like Kurt is trying to collect them all. He kills the fat man, and then, listen to this, he appears on stage with the band. 
The audience let out a comical gasp and they stare in silence. Cut once again, yells out, yeah. <gasps> and then the band copy him. The best five seconds of my life. James Storm is now talking to his family, asking what the necklace is that he's been wearing his whole life. <laughs> Did he not think to question it any other time in the last 30 years of his life? The dad literally doesn't know anything about Storm's necklace or why he's been having bad dreams. He does mention that there's an uncle they haven't seen for a very long time that might know something. Storm and his friend leave, with Storm's friend saying, I've got something that's going to make you feel a whole lot better, but it's not what you're thinking. Storm and his friends now meet up with some lady who's going to do a seance or something. Actually, cool little fact, this is Kurt Angle's current wife, Giovanni. But a seance is not what I thought his friend had in mind. Oh, I thought it was going to be some more crazy mud wrestling. She starts chanting, but then they play the comedic record slip sound effect and she yells at them all for staring at her boobs. Is this supposed to be a serious film or a comedy? I really don't know. The Ouija board starts moving and then it flies into the air. She screams that the Dark One is coming, which is why Storm's been having bad dreams. Surprised Storm didn't marry her the way he stares at her boobs. The police crew take the body away of the fat man who was murdered at the dance hall. Psycho Sid is again here. The cop just stares at him. How does he not find this suspicious? In the police station, the two groupies somehow have a picture of the Perkinator, and they say this is the one who murdered the fat man. How did they have his picture? The cops revealed that they know him. The Undertaker's druids are here now, carrying a sacrifice on a symbol. I'm not making this up, it looks exactly the same. They have put her in white and the druids are in black to represent the battle between good and evil. Now I'm probably reading way too much into that. An old man, possibly James Storm's dad, is asking to sacrifice the girl to someone. He spills an animal's blood on her and he's about to do it when a voice calls out. It's the Perkinator, he says it is I that you follow. Perk is here for the rune that is around his neck. The old man says, what's the meaning of this charlatan? Perk teleports behind him and ends his life. The rest of the worshipping crew put their hoods up and bow to Perk Angle, as you all should do. At the cop shop, they're trying to figure out what the scripture says. They have now figured out that it's not Chinese. Whoa, what? In another truck, Perk is headbanging to rock music. What the hell is this guy's character who is completely emotionless for the first part of the film? The pointless sheriff who hates James Storm chases after Perk. This makes Perk very happy as the music loudly plays that I'm gonna kill you. It's a peaceful time in Pennsylvania as the birds sing in the trees and the sun shines down. It doesn't last though because the sheriff is screaming and looking for Kurt Angle. Kurt has slipped out the door or teleported. I don't know, it's not really been established what his powers are. It suddenly dawns on the cop to turn around as Perk is now in the cop car and he runs the sheriff down. The sheriff crew decide it's time to do something now because a member of the law enforcement team has died. Wonder how many normal people could have died before they made that decision. James Storm is watching some weird movie on the dark web. It's an old man ranting about alien life. The word fuel keeps coming up, which Storm has noticed too. It turns out that the cops have called in the freaking army and they've cut the town off. The cowboy James Storm has driven off somewhere. He's looking in someone's car when an old man pulls a shotgun on him. The man goes nuts at him. Storm reveals that he's looking for a man called Leonard who is his uncle. Storm's dad did mention that earlier that his uncle knew something about the runes. I think this was the old man on the dark web tape too. But how did Storm suddenly have that tape? It was never established. And if the town's been cut off by the army, that means that they live in a very small area. So how has the uncle been missing all of this time? Storm shares a beer with his uncle as they have their reunion. Storm reveals that he's been having bad dreams. The old man praises how smart he is. How is he smart? What has he done? The old man is ranting about government conspiracies and pharmaceutical companies. Why is this happening? The cowboy tells his uncle that he saw a gypsy and she told him a dark creature was coming. His uncle says that his granddad told him lots of stories about the town's past. The ancestors of this town used to protect the town from evil creatures. There are four runes and Storm has one of them round his neck. He is the earth. God, I'm having flashbacks to when I was 10 years old playing RuneScape. The uncle says that if the Dark Lord captures the rune, he will rule the world for a thousand years. Storm is confused why nobody told him any of this before, apparently because the uncle thought it was potentially just folklore. He tells Storm to either find the gypsy woman or a priest to help him get the Perkinator. The old man says that he's too old to help him. They stare around the countryside like dumbasses. The uncle's life partner criticises the uncle for not helping him, to which he responds, Ugh, fine, load up my shotguns. Back with the police now, it seems the university have got hold of the scripture. We get that classic ongoing joke that it isn't Chinese. Classic. The professor says he's translated the script and it's in Celtic. It talks about four runes and whoever can possess all four runes will be super duper powerful. The Perkinator and James Storm have a slow motion stare down as the trucks pass each other. How did they just run into each other so quickly? Perk smiles and he's in the back of James Storm's truck now. 
Storm starts driving like a maniac whilst the I'm going to kill you music starts playing again. Now Angle's on his front windscreen. Storm bells from the car. The production looks so cheap and nasty here. The truck drifts into the darkness while Storm looks on. It's not drifting into a lake, so what is the point in this? How far does he expect it to drift? Some man calls Storm's dad saying that he saw Storm and Perk fighting on a car. Wow, small town. How is everyone bumping into each other? The two mechanic guys slowly stare at each other until one of them gets an idea. At a junkyard, some classic horror music is playing. James Storm is surrounded by druids. I just can't take this seriously anymore, I'm sorry. Perk holds a knife out and tells him to give him the rune. Storm refuses to hand over the rune. He says he owes it to his ancestors. <laughs> Perk swings with his knife and somehow misses. Yay, a wrestling move. Storm with a back body drop on the car. Angle responds with a clothesline. Why is Angle suddenly struggling? He killed so many people without trouble before this. Angle is about to do Storm in when a car starts beeping. And a giant monster truck is here, crashing over all the cars and scaring the druids off. One of the guys says, take that, you dumb worthless sons of bitches. The uncle was also here of his friends and they start shooting. Wait, how did they know where to find everyone? This doesn't make any sense. The monster truck crushes a caravan while some druids are in there hiding. One does manage to escape. The truck pulls up to where Angle is holding a knife to Storm's neck. Storm's dad says he's going to go and talk to Perk Angle. The army and the cops receive a call about the gunfire at the junkyard. See, at least you've given them a reason to know where they're going. Back at the junkyard, the old man asks Perk what his problem is. Perk says if Storm gives away the rune from his own free will, everyone will live. Storm explains that he can't give away the rune because he doesn't want to betray his grandfather. I'm sorry, but this is such a reach. Storm didn't even know who his family were a moment ago. Everyone notices a figure lurking in the shadows. The old man describes him as justice from another world. He's got that right. He calls Kurt Thule and tells him to go back to where he's come from. Perk refuses. I guess this is going to be the big epic face-off that we've been building up to. Wait, Kurt Angle runs at him in slow motion <laughs> and Sid simply picks him up and drops him to the floor whilst comical unfitting sound effects play. Sid chokes him until a mole comes out of his body and Sid puts the mole in his handbag and leaves. The cops and the army have arrived. I like how they keep playing helicopter sound effects but I've literally not seen one this whole film. The cops find out that Perk Angle has passed away. But when they turn around, the Perkinator rises up again. He's back to being a normal man and he screams no as the cops shoot him a bunch of times. They kill the Perkinator. James Storm is wrapped in a towel like a little girl. His uncle Leonard tells him how proud he is of the cowboy James Storm. One of the old men makes a joke about dumping in his nappy and they all share a laugh for an awkward amount of time. Isn't Storm's dad going to acknowledge his uncle? He hasn't seen him for years reportedly. Why are they still staring at each other like that? It's over. Well, except during the credit, the Perkinator rises up again. So this leaves room to make a part two. That's never gonna happen. Wow, I was not expecting James Storm to be such a major part of this film. He had more lines and screen time than Kurt Angle. Wait, what happened to Matt Boring? He was there at the start and then was never acknowledged again. He was pointless. Maybe just like his wrestling career. What, could they only pay him for the day or something? Nice cameo from ODB, it added a bit of colour to the film. Same with Rhino, both just small parts. I really feel like this is almost the exact same thing with Sid as the last movie. He didn't do enough. He looked kind of cool in his black car stalking the murder scenes. But have him do something. Explain who he is. Where's he come from? Maybe they thought it'd be a bit too much like the Terminator to have him constantly fighting with the evil angle. I thought we were going to get a hillbilly Terminator at the start of this thing. That would have been better still. Angle was definitely better in this film than River of Darkness. There were still problems with his character, but at least he had a sort of backstory. Well, the thing that possessed him did anyway. They just never took his ruthlessness or destruction far enough to make this movie memorable. He didn't really look stupid here, which was the main improvement. And James Storm, the most popular guy in town, he did okay. I did struggle to take him seriously at times. He wasted too much time having boring conversations with his friends. They could have spent that time fleshing his character out more. The supporting cast all did a good job and I enjoyed their jokes and banter, even if it did come across as a bit of a grey crew film. And on a side note, poor James Storm, he had the most lines in the movie and doesn't even get his name on the film cover. In comparison to River of Darkness, again, there was just not enough action. The bad guy kills a bunch of people, none of them really fight back. He deals with them all with ease, and the rest of the film is just filler into the last scene. Have Sid and Perk meet a few times at least and fight it out. I just don't think Perk was even aware of Sid's existence until the final scene. It felt like both of these films were trying to deliberately limit Sid's screen time. The production was a lot better this time round. It still wasn't great, but there was far less moments which were poorly lit or had jarring cuts. I'm not saying it's great, I'm saying it was better. 
But yeah, overall, I had a couple of laughs at the absurd dialogue in this film, and I did enjoy parts. Not sure I'd have felt the same way if it was just random actors rather than well-known wrestlers. River of Darkness was just a terrible film, regardless of the cool visuals of seeing wrestlers. Death from Above would still be bearable even without the wrestlers. It would just be a bit boring. River of Darkness got a 1 out of 10 from the Hawk, and this one gets a 3 out of 10 from the Hawk. But hold your hawks, because we ain't done yet. We still got one more film left in the Angle trilogy. We need to do this next to see if Kurt Angle can become the next Dwayne Johnson. 